I'm gonna do a really quick YouTube video. So um, someone asked me on one of my uh, on my panel video, why do I add like heaps of edge loop right on my panels? So I'm gonna show you a very basic demonstration of what I, of why. We're gonna triple edge it or bevel it, whatever. So people are asking, like, if this is going to hold the edge, why would you add extra supporting edges? So if I preview smooth this and I have this edge selected, you can see how far the edge itself is moving, right? Pretty big. You don't want that to happen. So the reason I add supporting edges here is to try and offset how much that edge moves. So when we select this edge now, and we go back and forth, you can see this edge doesn't move that much. So it keeps uh, it keeps your edge much nicer during the smoothing process. But then what I really do is this. So I end up doing let's see, maybe like I won't go too crazy. Maybe like two here, one here. So now what happens is this doesn't move that much at all and the edges themselves don't move. So yeah, this is kind of the main reason why I add all this. You're on YouTube? Yes, you're on YouTube. So that's that's why we add all these extra edge loops like this. It just means when it's subdivided, the edges aren't sliding as much because what happens is the UVs are going to stretch as well. And the reality is this is was this is what's going to be checked into the pipeline this model here and what's going to be textured is going to be this so this just preserves or maybe I won't do it twice this is and you can see like this is just much closer to this than for example this to this yeah that's the very quick straight to the point of why I'd add extra edge loops is because you don't want edge sliding too much. Yeah, you can you can see how much this edge here slides. You end up with some kind of weird soft corner like that. Yeah, does anyone have any quick questions about that? Someone asked me in the comments and I thought I would just quickly do like a, a very quick demonstration of why. Another thing is like, I guess since we're talking about it, you don't want your edge loops to be like really long. So say for example, we took this into a ZBrush, right? Subdivide it. We're going to have all these really, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that too. Much. You're going to have all these really weird rectangular polygons and you kind of don't really want that. Where if we subdivide this one, the polygons themselves are much more square. And it's just, it's just a bit nicer. It's a bit more unified than, this is super thin and stretched out. Since we're on the topic of like subdividing and that, I might actually bring up another pet peeve. Of <laughs> Let's, we'll do, we'll do some more topology exercises since we're, since we're going with this. So, the way I usually do my corners is something like this. Like maybe we can just bevel it, turn the chamfer off, merge those three. Boom. And we can just draw that to here. And then we can draw this line here. Then we can get the middle. This is how I usually do my corners, right? Obviously if you want, if this was a pretty big surface, you could add some more supporting edges like that but anyway what some people do which is kind of a pet peeve and to me I feel kind of lazy which does still technically work but which does still technically work but I don't really like when people do it is they just leave it at this process and this kind of really annoys me like this still technically works but what happens is, like, for example, with this mesh, if we get rid of extra one, we only have to deal with one edge. Where with this one, we now need to deal with three edges that, like, bleed into the rest of the mesh. 
which can be annoying. And another thing is, say for example, we have these two meshes, right? And we want to, you know, take the, the mesh into ZBrush, we want to sculpt on it and do some damage, stuff like that. The problem is, if you have this and this, I'll show you what happens when you subdivide it. So, you'll start to notice this topology is a lot more spread out, where this mesh is now super dense here. So what can happen in ZBrush, right, is when you're sculpting, it can be kind of uneven and a bit frustrating. To get around that, you have to take the mesh like much higher to make it more not even. It will never be even. But you might have to take the density of the mesh much higher. Where with this, aside from obviously the edge, the general shape of the top is a lot more consistent with the Control middle click is the multi cut. Uh, I just like the shift right click here. So I, I use um, I use tablet for everything. So for me, it's much easier to just like shift right click and flick my wrist to just access multi cut like that. But yeah, some some very quick uh, topology thing. Nothing nothing too crazy.